Hi everyone, it's Sal Jade from the Psychic Healing Academy and best-selling tarot instructor on Udemy and I am so excited to be here with you today interviewing the very wonderful Scarlett Darkwood who is an amazing tarot reader and who is doing some incredibly exciting things that I wanted to share with those of you out there who want to become professional readers, are already professional readers and looking at different ways to make income. So Scarlett does a lot of work on the road going to festivals and and she does events, so she does like things like parties and fairs. And for me, this is incredibly important to know these kind of things when you are thinking about being a professional reader. Now, I know there's a huge impetus out there for everyone to want to work online, and I know that for people that is their preference. And some of you might be there going, look, Sal, I don't want to ever you know, be out on the road. I only ever want to be in online and doing it like that. But from someone who's been now doing this for 15 years, please trust me when I tell you the universe has an interesting sense of humour when it comes to doing professional tarot readings and saying the word never. <laughs> <laughs> and I, those of you who know me well who have done my Udemy course on manifestation for healers and psychics know that if you are running a business, sometimes you will get thrown into an amazing opportunity that you might have said, I will never do that, will actually lead to the best move in your career. So be open-minded if you're someone who thinks I would never do that. If you're someone who has considered it, I'm going to have lots of amazing juicy tips that Scar Scarlett is going to share with you and that I'm going to share with you from my own experiences as well. We're going to be looking at the best way to get started doing this, extra tips, things to avoid. We're going to be sharing a few funny stories and I'm hoping that you get a lot of value out of this masterclass. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I have been teaching tarot now for 15 years. Um, I'm very lucky enough to have helped many thousands of people learn to read tarot, start online businesses, and, and I've given thousands of readings myself in my professional career. If you'd love to receive some of these offerings that I give on YouTube, these masterclasses, these webinars, and the shorter tarot tutorials, please do hit subscribe so that you always get my latest offerings. Now, if you have questions along the way, please do pop them here. I love to answer your questions. It's something that gives me so much joy. So pop them in the comments so that we can answer as you are going. Now, um, so further ado, I've now given it up about myself. Someone, I've got some people joining me here live. Please pop your name and say hello if you are here on the live stream. Um, I love to see where you're from. So I'm going to get started with the wonderful Scarlett. So first, I'd like to just say, I'd like to know, you know, how you got started. Um, talk a little bit about your gifts and when you were first uh, aware of your gifts, that would be great. And then how you get how you got started going into fairs and festivals, because the reason I was so excited about interviewing Scarlett, she was one of my former advanced graduate students from my advanced tarot and psychic business program many years ago. And when I started seeing her pop up, on my in my Facebook feed because I was following her on Facebook that she was doing all these live fairs in very exotic places to me like Tennessee <laughs> a long way from me but I used to get very excited seeing her pop up and going I have to interview her and find out more because I'm hugely passionate about people doing different things to earn income so I'm so excited to hand over there hello Mia Oh, you've completed the psychic class and you're currently working on the tarot classes on Udemy. Thank you so much for joining me. So without further ado, I've babbled on about myself enough here. I'm going to turn you over to Scarlett. And just if you share with the audience about your own beautiful intuitive gifts and how you became aware of them and also how you got started and what drew you to doing fairs and festivals and events. Well, thank you for having me on. And if you need to stop me for any reason, feel free to do it. <laughs> Um, I introduced myself to tarot when I was 25 and I had moved to Nashville recently, Nashville, Tennessee, and I stopped in this store and I saw these cards and I was drawn to them and I didn't know what they were. I thought I had kind of heard of them, but if those of you who don't know, Nashville or Tennessee is in the Bible Belt. So it's going to be difficult at my time years ago to have found tarot and occult items, period. So anyway, I bite the bullet, scared to death. I buy the deck of cards. I got the mythic tarot by Juliet Sharman Burke. And I was so relieved when I read her book and, and it says nothing to be afraid of. It's just your intuition. You already know the answer. And I thought, oh, that is so neat. So I had to teach myself by 
the book because we didn't have beautiful Udemy courses like Sal Jade offers. It didn't exist. The internet didn't exist. And Windows was just coming onto the scene. So I had to teach myself. And so I practiced with family and friends. And my first event was a four hour nursing convention. And it was called Past, Present, Future. And my good friend knew I read tarot. She said, hey, do you want to be part of the entertainment? So I fat, sat there for four hours reading cards. And I learned now that don't do 10 card pulls when you're reading for a big group. <laughs> so I went through a big tip. Don't do that. Um, County you know, Cross and festivals do not mix. <laughs> yeah, they really don't. And so anyway, I, I think I read through them quickly, and but I loved it. And so I had read tarot off and on throughout the years, nothing regularly, but always had this love of tarot. So when I found Sal Jade's course, um, I signed up for all her courses. I took her complete tarot course. And then finally, I decided I wanted to take her tarot mastery certification course because I knew I wanted to, to I wanted to do this seriously. I wanted to do it regularly. Uh, then I got my certification. And so for two and a half years, uh, I've been doing shows and fairs and events. And what got me started in it was trying to find clients. Now, People will have a different experience with this because depending on where you're located, um, how many people you know, how, ma how big your network is, or who you know will depend on if you even start with festivals and fairs or events, or if you have an automatic feeding system where you just get clients. Uh, in my case, being in my location, it didn't come that easy. So I had to think of a way to get out there. And I thought, well, let's do some shows and fairs. I mean, I've done a few of them with my, my other business. So what you want to do when you're doing fairs and festivals, you want to first determine how far are you willing to travel? Are you willing to go out of state? Um, do you want to do just one or two hours? So do an internet search. You'll want to put in keywords like uh, metaphysical shows near me, um, oh, cool. occult shows near me. Um, there's uh, oddities shows. There's witchy oh, type What was that things. last one? I missed that one. Order. Oddities, like an oddities oh. market. They sell oh, all that? weird things like bones and oh, oddities. odds, odd stuff. Yeah. Oh, things we like don't that have that in Australia. Oddities. We what? have that here. And I just went to one. I didn't participate in it because I didn't know about it. And um, <laughs> But sometimes they will want you in it. Sometimes they won't. But I'll talk a little bit about how to get in the shows. First of all, you got to find yeah. out where are the shows. So do an internet search. Type in a di bunch of different keywords. You know, yeah. metaphysical shows near me or holistic shows near me, oddity shows near me, witchy shows near me, anything, get creative. Then go to Facebook and start looking up groups like Indiana vendor groups for all of those who oh, live in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, in, yes. yeah, your area. So vendor, you might look up uh, vendor groups. You might look up your state um craft shows or state holistic shows. Get creative with that because the different things will pop up. If you have seen somebody at a fair, a lot of these people put out their schedules. Go look and see where they go. So ah, that's a good tip. Yeah. yeah, that's how I got some of mine. So here's the other thing with these shows. You have to decide what kinds of shows do you want to do? Do you believe it or not, craft shows? You might can get some business with a craft show. The only difference is if they let you in you will have to create something crafty to sell, a product to sell, oils, <laughs> loose incense. You got to get your foot in the door with this stuff. I'm sorry for laughing, creative. but I am the kindy kid that failed craft. I can't imagine me getting Yeah, far it's with crazy, that. but It'd they want you to art. sell. <laughs> yes. Make a mala, make malas, make some jewelry, make some loose yeah. incense, oils, lotion, whatever. Think of something. So you kind of that sell that on a table and then you have the readings as a sign. Yeah, on another table. Yeah, usually yeah. the spaces are 10 by 10, indoor, outdoor. So you can get two six foot tables and a four foot table if you want to get all in there. So uh, I was able to put together some kits 
like spell kits or meditation kits. The other thing you have to be careful about is you want to try to blend in with both occult type shows and holistic type shows. So sometimes for a holistic show, I call myself an alternative therapist with tarot as a tool. A witchy or an occult show, tarot is tarot. They're good. Um, mostly they see tarot and they're, they want to do a reading. So um, don't diss a craft show. I kind of want to get out of them a little bit because I'm tired of crafting everything. Um, <laughs> do you ever actually sell things? <laughs> like the yeah, we actually do sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the products will sell uh, over the readings, but a lot of times the readings carry the show. But yeah. that's something to keep in mind. And let me tell you something else. Don't diss a St. Patrick's Day festival where I made bank this past March. And I'm doing a 4th of July one at the same place, same show owner tomorrow, nine hour shows. Okay. Wow. So these shows are long. They're anywhere from six to nine hours. You will be getting up early. Uh, you will be setting up. You'll be doing your thing while you're there. And then you'll be taking down. So it's an all day event. Um, so that's the thing. But once you start getting shows lined up, you can do as many as you can fit in in a weekend. Um, when I first started, we kind of went gangbusters and, and wore ourselves out in about two and a half years. We're a little bit older. So, um, you know, pace yourself on how many you want to do. And every show is different. Um, sometimes if there are a ton of tarot readers in a, in a holistic show, um, you may not get as many people because if the people are local and they know those oh, readers, yeah. that they stick to them. And, it, and especially if you're traveling, it just may not be a good one for you to do. Sometimes these craft shows or these um, festivals like full moon festivals or whatever, you might be one of only two or three. You're going to get all the business and you can do like 13 or 14 readings. Wow. That's a lot. And yes. when I do these readings, I do an eight card pull, a modified Celtic cross. They're paying about 30 bucks for a reading. Okay. So, yeah, so that's US for those of you who are in other countries yeah. that are not US. Um, yeah, $30. Yes. And one thing with these shows, decide if you want an outdoor show or an indoor show. Indoor shows are more okay. expensive, but it's protected. It doesn't matter about the weather. If you do an outdoor yeah. show, you will have to get an easy up tent. They're not that easy like to a, put up. It's a lie. Oh, like a, like a marquee or something. Yeah, with everything, panels, and if you want to have those. Um, the problem is, is you will be dealing with every type of weather you can imagine, pouring down yeah. rain, heat, cold. I've decided I don't want an outdoor show anymore. No. So you've done a few three. of them and, and yeah. found them. Not, just not, not my thing. No, no. Yes. Uh -uh. It's too much. Um, it's yeah. a lot to get those up. That's a more to take down. But, yeah. you know, people are different. If you want more variety, there's a lot of outdoor shows and they're a lot of fun, but just know the weather's going to get you. Um, yeah. And also, thing, I was going to just add one of the, when I was going through uni, one of my many 5,000 jobs I've done in my life. <laughs> Those of you who have done my how to do career, how to give careers and life purpose readings course, know all of my jobs that I've done. And one of them was at in uni, I sold jewelry and biscuits I think at a at Byron when I grew up in Byron at the um at the markets there and one of the problems with that is as you said like you still have to pay for the stall if it stay if it starts raining halfway through and yeah. that's it you, you're done then you still have to pay for it so you know you can be right. out of a lot of pocket unless it, unless they call this call the whole markets off at the beginning of the day which is like five or six in the morning then mm -hmm. you won't get that money back so it can be I can that, see the that is true that. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I got over ambitions and signed up for a bunch of um, outdoor shows and my husband said we don't want to do these anymore. I lost several hundred dollars, <laughs> but we oh, knew yeah. it. Down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we knew it. So yeah. uh, just try not to do that and make a decision ahead of time what your yeah. limits are. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I like that. I think it's a thing where you try it and it either you love it and it works or you go, right, or you no, don't. I've had a few bad experiences. I don't want to do this anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just be prepared. You may not have time to eat. So pack some water and a protein drink, something that you will give you energy. And, and um, you know, because a lot of times these events have food trucks, but I know in some of my cases, I don't have time to eat. So yeah, because it can I'll, be that full on, can't it? It can be. Just, yes. Just, yeah. Yes. I've sometimes barely got set up and people were already coming to my table. 
So um, once you get these shows, you have to apply for them. So they're going to want pictures. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Can you, so what, what do they need from the beginning to the end? So once you, so you contact them by email, is that right? right. <laughs> Just when you get these applications, you'll have to look on their event, uh, their event pages on Facebook. You'll have to look at yeah. their website. So a lot of times uh, it's just trying to get into the groove of hooking up with the show owner and getting the applications. Uh, once they know you, it becomes a lot easier. Uh, so you'll fill out that application. You're going to give them your business name, um, your, your email, your phone number. They're going to want to know what are you selling? What are you offering? Uh, they're going to say, what space do you want? Do you want a 10 by 10? Do you want indoor, outdoor? It depends on what the show is. And then at the end, they're going to make sure that you click the terms, that you're not holding the show responsible for anything that happens, um, that uh, you're uh, supplying everything you need, what have you. Sometimes they'll, you can pay more for electricity if you want it, if you're inside. Um, if you are in a location or an event where they want you to have insurance, ACT Insurance will sell for a day act or two insurance? at oh, act act insurance and you pay act, about sorry, ACT insurance ACT. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, I'll and you'll that in the pay people. yes yes yeah. and they're wonderful to work with 45 bucks will get you a three-day coverage even one to three days oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah, it is nice. Uh, and you can also have a policy with them if you want. If you're doing a lot where they're wanting insurance coverage or you just want that, that's a good yeah. place to go. So um, once you get accepted, you just start making your calendar up and start keeping up with everything. Get your addresses straight and know where you're going. Um, you know, if you can drive there. Have plenty of time to get there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because they want you there setting up from a certain time and you better be done by a certain yeah. time and ready to go when the show yeah. starts. If you are sick that morning or something has come up, like what happened to me last month, email them or they'll usually give the phone number, message them some way and please tell them. As yeah, soon so as you know, building that nice reputation, and yes, yes, uh, yes. because you don't that want to leave way a they, bad smell behind you. <laughs> absolutely, because a lot of people won't say anything. So if you want to be allowed back in, follow hmm. the rules. Yes, and it can be a curiously small world in those kind of festival events. Yes. Like people know each other, so you definitely want to keep in the good books with everyone and make sure. Well, show right. owners participate in other people's shows when they're not doing yeah. their own, so they yes. do know each other. Yes. Um, so be very polite, be very respectful, uh, be easy to work Good with, team. do not be demanding, uh, be self-contained and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. so. Perfect. So for you, um, I might stop now and answer some of those questions. So um, hello, Yesha. Um, Mia. Now, Mia wants to know, how do you handle naysayers in public arenas? I'm hesitant. I don't want to be confronted by someone who doesn't understand. So, so have you ever had someone be negative in you? Uh, yes, I have. Um, yeah. I, I did one, and we don't do the show anymore, not because we don't like the lady. Um, it's just we just didn't do well at her show. But a man came by and looked at my table, and he goes, shame, shame. <gasps> and I said, oh, no, 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 it's nothing bad. I just kind of laughed and ignored him, and he moved on. Uh, yeah. Some people will come by your table and say, what is this? What do you do? And so you just explain to them that it's a I guess great... you probably get that more at craft fairs, don't you? At those ones yeah, where yeah, more so than that's... their normal kind of tarot right. fairs where they'd be expecting it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people say, what do you do? How does this work? Just explain to them that it's a tool for self-exploration, guidance. There's nothing to be afraid of, and you'd be happy to do a reading for them. Sometimes when somebody's just kind of looking at my table, like, hmm, I said, would you like a reading? And they're like, sure. They, just, <laughs> they get shy about asking. Yeah, no, let me sit down and do a reading. So, um, and some people will say, oh, let me think about it. And sometimes they'll come back. Um, but um, you can get a naysayer. You just smile, be polite, and just kind of ignore them, move, move along. Yeah. It's a look, and I I know from so I've done mind body spirit. I did that quite early in my career, which was an amazing baptism of fire for me. Just to do seventeen readings in a row, <laughs> you never get nervous again. <laughs> we yeah. do, but not as nervous. Um, but I feel like that there's something about just um, not needing to prove yourself. 
for me. And I found that in my whole career. Like when anyone asks me, you know, like even, you know, um, extended family members or people that don't understand, I just, I'll either give a one, two sentence thing or I'll just say, you know, and I'll just change the subject. Like you don't need to prove and get angry or get aggressive or get hostile because someone's questioning you. Um, just be like, oh, it just works, as you said. And I love, you've got, you've got my attitude. I love it. You know, the, you know, it's a tool for self-exploration. It's going to help you make better decisions in your life and to feel more empowered and, you know, that kind of thing. So just, you know, if you if you if you're saying that if you're going to sit there and rub your hands and say I'm going to tell your fortune and everything I say 100% will come through, then you are probably going to attract your fair share of naysayers. <laughs> but if you talk about I'm going to help you with transformation and and I can help you with that, um, if you're curious and you know, don't worry, it's a gentle thing, nothing bad's going to happen. But you know, if you can see they're just there to pick a fight with you in this culture that we are addicted to outrage, then just you don't need to just engage with them. Is how I deal with it. That's, exactly. That's, and if somebody yeah. gives you a hard time, go get the show owner. I yeah, mean, well, that's you know, it, isn't it? You've got some protection when you do it. You've got some protection. Kind of you um, some you'll here. want to. <laughs> yeah, uh, it can happen. Luckily, you know, most people know what it is who want it and they will sit down and have a reading. Make sure you take a lot of different payments. PayPal.me. Oh, good. Yeah, Thank uh, you. Right. Square, Venmo. Yeah. Yep. Take several different forms of payments. Devices, so not just one. Yeah, don't no, do one. I mean, I hate a bunch of different accounts, but you're going to need it. How, so is that because the festivals won't let you do it or it's just some um, people don't have access to do it with Some their people don't have a PayPal account. They want Venmo. Yeah. A lot of people want Venmo. And so yeah. it's we easy to We don't have Venmo up. in Australia. So Do you? Yeah, you we don't? have Square though. I think people. Have I have Square. square. I yeah, love Square. I yeah. yeah. Do a Square account. Do Venmo. Some people do Stripe. Um, yeah. You've got to be careful. Sorry, for those of you in Australia, I have to add. Sorry, I'm doing this. Australia. I know there's hardly anyone in Australia here watching, but uh, most of my audience is in the US, so but or in India. But I know that um, Stripe in Australia don't let you do it if you do any kind of psychic business. So do, but yeah, I know. Um, I had a problem with that with my Psychic Healing Academy. I was with Stripe for a while and they suddenly just said, we have to cut, we cut, because you're teaching tarot, we have to cut it out. It's like the oh, bank, okay. ANZ or National Australia Bank or whatever said, and I was like, okay. Um, which, um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind that in Australian audiences, um, just to check what they'll let you do with tarot before you go and spend lots of money on it. Because it does cost a bit to keep those monthly mm -hmm. update fees, isn't it, for those things? So do be careful. But Square sounds like a universal thing that seems to be Square is good. Uh, also, yeah. people can type in, you can go to PayPal and set up a um, a PayPal.me, like my yes. pay, mine is PayPal.me forward slash the Scarlet Mystic. Yeah. And so they yeah, can type can that in their browser. Yes. Yeah, and they can send you money if they have a PayPal account. Venmo. I haven't had problems with tarot stuff with Venmo, Square, or PayPal. That must be just the U.S. is a bit more, you know, not as... Can you imagine the, the prudish <laughs> U.S.? <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm saying that, <laughs> that they're more conservative <laughs> than our country. <laughs> but, um, Mia's just said cash app. Is that a app as well? Yeah, cash app. I have a cash app. Uh, I kind of, somebody hacked my card. And so now I don't have a card attached to it. Um, I hate cash app, but okay. I do have it. You yeah. know, I could probably okay. get one activated if I needed to. Um, okay. well, that's but, a few different, a few different ones. That, so yeah. Square, Venmo, um, PayPal, PayPal me, that is, isn't it? You create a PayPal, PayPal me button and then um, cash app me, I mentioned is good too. So exactly. Okay. So can you share, um, there's some so many great tips, thank you so much, and thank you for those questions too. Um, can you share, I know you said avoiding the, um, you know, doing the Celtic cross, and you say you say you do for 30 minutes, you do $30, $30 US. Now, do they set that or do you set that or how does that work? So what I do is I decided if somebody's paying me $30, they need at least 15 minutes or yes. 20 minutes. Um, I don't know that I go 30 unless they have a lot of questions. You have to understand you're in a very active area. It's a little noisy, um, you know, so people may not want to discuss things out in public. But um, depending on the fair, there are some fairs that they want you to bring a timer. If you're going to a mystical fair 
or I, something. I think time is a good plan. <laughs> yeah, they, they will make you bring a timer so that you time everything. I started yeah. doing that and then stopped. So my okay. average time is 15 to 20 minutes, roughly. And okay. so therefore, I will do an eight card pull and an oracle pull. Oh, that's okay. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah, that's good. That's good value. Yeah, look, yeah. for me, I'm one of these people, I could brabble on all day if I don't have a timer. So I need, I set, I set the timer five minutes before right. it finishes. And then I summarize it in that last bit um, right. to keep the flow. Right. Well, I'll be there all day with the one <laughs> Yeah, oh, absolutely. You can get them on Amazon. Make sure they're yeah. charged. They should last you all day. Make sure yeah. everything oh, I, I is charged. I actually just use my iPhone. I just use this. And, um, yes. Set my, Make sure your uh, phones are charged. That. Make sure your uh, your yeah, uh, Apple little square things are charged. Uh, yes, make sure if you have thing. an older phone or have an adapter, bring a square reader. Yes. Have everything ready because you may not have electricity if you're outside. <sighs> Yes. Okay. That is so interesting. Make, I never thought of that. Yeah. So you've yeah. got to make sure that everything's all there prepared. Everything is now, charged. So do they, um, what kind of question, I know you've, I know some people are going to be asking this, so I just wanted to, oh, thank you. Anna, Anna Marie said she looked into PayPal a few years back and their terms of service wouldn't cover psychic services on the vendor end. Anna Marie, can you let us know what country you're in? That would just help some people because I know in Australia they do, but just let me know what country you're in that would help people who are watching this that may be worried about that particular question themselves. Um, where was I going? What was I saying? I got distracted by questions. Um, the, it was a good question though. You are, you're in the USA. Oh, and you're saying in the PayPal won't let you do psychic services on the vendor end. I wonder if they've changed maybe since COVID. <laughs> maybe they got it. Maybe they saw the, the profit in it since COVID. Yeah. Um, I don't get paid a lot by PayPal, but I have had somebody, well, somebody, I've just not, I don't think I've had a problem with it. You don't have to put in the note what it is uh, oh, that you're okay. paying for. Now, Venmo, you do. That's a good tip. Okay. So yeah. maybe you can, maybe you call yourself something else like, uh, you know, um, spiritual counseling or. Yes, a coach. Or uh, uh, so maybe uh, in your name, you just put your name, you know, yeah. say that you put what your name is. Because. Yeah, that yeah, because I can imagine that can be. I mean, that, and that's good. That's good advice for everyone watching. Please check your own individual countries with this. PayPal is different in different countries. You know, Venmo, yeah. we don't have it in our country. Like, be um, be really super aware of your own country and what the laws are and what they allow. And especially as I said before, before you go and sign up any contracts to pay for anything, make sure you know what it is that they do. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I never thought about them not taking that, but yeah. I, I, that you can run into issues like that. Yes, you can. So do a bit of research on that one. So um, just a quick recap for those of you who are joining us. So we're looking at you. You get an application process. On that application, do you have to say how much experience you've had? Or I'm just sort of predicting questions. People are probably going to ask. Um, do people? Do they say? Oh. You know, you need, I don't know, you said some some people, some places need um, certification, like the Zoom exam you did with me, that would classify as certification. But like what, um, or is that a norm or do they just make you fill out? Because I know with mind, body, sorry, the reason I'm babbling on about this and not very eloquently, mind, body, spirit, when I did it, um, they had quite a thorough application process where I did have to put in my years of experience. I had to put in a couple of references of people who would recommend me. I had to do, um, I think, even a pre professional reference. I was very lucky because at the time I was working in a shop. So I, you know, knew a lot of psychics in the shop. And, um, you know, so there's, there's ways that I was easily able to do that. But do you find in your experience, I don't know if that's an Australian thing or because Mind, Body, Spirit is quite a massive franchise. Um, how do you find that? Do they demand a lot of um, evidence of your experience or do you just say I've been doing this for this many years how does the application processes usually work um, they usually don't ask all that they just want to know what are you going to be doing and so I will put okay. like tarot readings uh, meditation kits oils that I've made books I've written um, just all the things I'm going to an oracle deck I've created you know things like that uh, however, it depends on the show. I will tell you one that I did, and I'm now allowed in all her shows if I want to travel some. She isn't coming to Nashville anymore, at least not for a while. Um, but I had to do an interview with her. I had to get online with her, and I had to do a reading for her. And um, wow. she's... 
Yeah. And she said, let me tell you. Yeah, that was crazy. I thought, okay, nobody's ever asked for that. She said, the reason I do this, I've had a couple of experiences. She said, number one, I want to see how you talk, how you interact, because I'm shocked at the people I used to get who couldn't even talk. They, they could not even interact. And wow. so I want to make sure that you are comfortable doing what you do and that, you know, you can communicate well. She said, the other thing, too, is though I honor all paths here, uh, I don't want somebody to tell somebody that they're going to die. She said, I actually had a tarot reader do that. And that I heard the screaming and. Oh, um, darlings, please never do that. Never, never do that. Yeah, I, I did have an experience once where a lady was getting a divorce. And guess what the final out card come is? Eight of Cups. And Can so <laughs> I said, well, I said, I hate to tell you this. I said, now, look, I said, there's no guarantee this is going to happen or anything. I said, but in the end, you may have to walk away from some things. And that's OK. Mm -hmm. Of course, she's boohoo crying. I hand her a Kleenex. Keep Kleenex because sometimes if you're reading oh, yes. the emotional thing, get give them a Kleenex. And a lot of my people cry sometimes. I'm not trying to make them cry. No. Nothing bad. It's just, well, they're, it hits they're so They're exceptionally strongly. vulnerable. And I, you know, I yes. talk about this a lot about the vulnerability of coming and seeing a tarot reader and the empathy you need to have. You know, it's, it's, it's not a carnival, you know, show. Yeah. It's a no, joke. it's not it's a parlor trick. Feelings. It's a, right. it's people's feelings that they're sharing with you. So, but yes, I'm not going to lie it. either. Yeah, you know, if it's not the greatest no, you, card, you, you but I pulled another card like for her. Yeah. yeah, I pulled another card. I said it was um, it was the ju judgment card, oh, which was perfect. good. So, you know, perfect yeah, resurrection. Sure. I said you will remake yourself. I said you will come through no matter what happens. Um, yeah. I said you know just. Keep these things in mind, nothing to be frightened of. I said, and if you need another reading with me or you want to talk about this, let me know. Yeah, yeah, I love that. But that's my, yeah, always do that if you know, because we have hard times in life and sometimes we are going to walk away from painful situations. And so being able to just say, this is, you yeah. know, doesn't mean the world's going to end, but it does mean that you may need some extra some extra sure. in the in the future to see where you're going with this. Yes. So have you had any very funny experiences? Um yeah, I've had some crazy ones. Um just like just kind of <laughs> kind of weird. They're my um, favorite. <laughs> my age, I hate to say it, sometimes you're gonna wear down just a tidbit. I'm pretty hardy. I mean, I can do readings like if I do an event reading, I can read, do three card pulls and I can read 40 people in wow. like five yeah. or six hours. That's a marathon read. Um, I'm not doing it. You, you have a nursing background, don't you? Yes, I do. I always say people that are nurses and those kind of professions, they know what it's like to give and give and give and, and give just, for yeah. 10 hours without a coffee break, barely. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My but, mother's a nurse, so I do know. That oh, nurse. I did not know that. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. That's um. Well, so I remember I was, uh, this is the last festival I did, and it was one of the show owners. And most people asked me for a general reading. So I had had that hammered in my head, but she wanted a relationship reading. So I do the card spread and I'm doing the reading. And I said, do you have any questions on the cards? And she said, well, it was a good reading. She said, but you didn't tell me anything about relationship. Oh, that's so funny when it's like that. It's like, no. And I said, if you, wanted you know that, what? Say it in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like an idiot, but I said, okay, oh, so let's really look at this relationship wise. And I quickly went through the cards on how it could go for a relationship. Yeah. So you can look at your spread and look at it in different ways, whether it's career, but do try to just keep in mind what they're wanting and don't forget. Yeah, that's a really good tip. And that is something, you know, you can, especially in those situations where, you know, you don't have much time to sort of back up because you might have other people waiting, being able to just say, so what, you know, why are you here today? What would you like to know? That's, yes. you know, but I do know I've had that before where people are like, oh, I just want a general. And so you give them a general and then at the end they're like, oh, but what about my career? And you're like, okay. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I really wanted to know about my job. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you yeah, you got to kind of backpedal and and, yeah. and and try not to Practically do like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you know, yeah. Just be cool and say, okay, yeah. so now let's look at this 
in this exactly. way, yeah. you know, it's just the way it goes. And I think one other time I was reading, it was two ladies, they were two friends and they happened to have different experiences and they were surrounding death. So I do the, the, the first yeah. one and it was surrounding death. Her husband had died and whatever. And so she said, okay, now I want my, you do one for my friend. Some strange reason, though the friend told me a little bit about her, as I was doing the reading, I kept thinking of the other person. It's almost like they blended the reading, the thoughts. And I finally looked up at her and I said, I have a feeling I was thinking about your friend here. She said, your reading was spot on. She said, I'm a funeral director. Ah, oh my goodness, well done. That so, is, how, I mean, this is, I love that because this is what I, you know, as you know, I teach in my courses. It's like, just go with whatever you know, you might preface it with, I know this is going to sound strange or crazy, but just, and then people will often validate and go, oh, yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, you know, tell so. you. One thing to keep, so sometimes I feel like I'm more of a rote reader, which I don't like. Yeah. But so can you explain for those who don't know that means like you might look so, at the card and go, this means this, this means this, this means this, rather than intuitive. Is that what you mean? Yes. yes. So yes. rote reading is you truly look at the cards for what their meaning is and their relation to the spread, and that's kind of what you stick with. Uh, yes. A lot of people will tend to look at the scene and not worry about the traditional meanings. Some yes. people are very just intuitive, and they're going to get stuff that, you know, if – you're learning tarot and you look at it and you go, I don't know how in the world they even came up with that. So my thing of it is, is if you want to go and not be as rote, uh, you can try to determine the number of cards you want to pull and don't do a typical spread. Just lay them on the table the way you feel drawn to laying them and then yeah. read them. Um, yes. I have had instances where, I've gotten a card that something was coming through for me and I'm a very subtle, my psychic stuff is very subtle. And I knew this card, what I was getting through was not what that norm card normally meant. So I told the customer, I've already, I want to talk to you about this card. I said, I've given you the traditional meaning, but I'm getting something else with this card. And I'm going to tell you what it is. So I shared that with them and they said, that's really neat that you mentioned that because I was looking at that card. There was something that came through for them too. And they didn't know what it was. Wow. And look, thank you so much, Scarlett, because that is, you know, one of the things I, I often get asked a lot, and you've just nailed that, is that people are like, well, I've, I've started watching this YouTube person. It's totally different to what you teach, Sal, and basically, you know, is what you teach rubbish. And I'm like, no, I'm teaching the traditional way. But as you become better, you will actually develop your own way. And sometimes readers will pull a card that will fit because they've got, a, they've got a narrative going already, like they've got a flow going and that card fits in a different way even if it's not traditional. And then sometimes, as you said, the intuition just goes, okay, but I'm really I'm amazed and in awe about how you just explained that. That was a brilliant way of explaining it, of being able to just say, this is the traditional meaning, but I'm getting this. So that way you're allowing for that expansion and that intuition. Right. I would say the best thing is don't worry if you're not like the others. I mean, yes. you oh, got to be great. you. You yeah. have you to be you. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let it come to you. You do your own way. You're going to find your own voice. As you do this, the more you do this, you're going to find yourself self starting to shift and change, and you're going to get better. Like I'm studying, uh, I, I'm a member of Boda, Builders of the Atatum. Well, they teach the mystical meaning of the cards. And oh, you yes, don't get yes. that in any guidebook. No. So I try to tell people, okay, there's some other things I want to tell you about this card, and here's the mystical meaning behind this. Yeah, so it's, it's going in at a deeper level. And I often find, I don't know if this is like this with you, um, and this is how the kind of intuition works well with the tarot, is I find that with particular clients I will be like, okay, this person's just getting a very straightforward, I call it a straight reading. It's a straight reading, you know, it's exactly, it's coming forward really naturally to what those traditional meanings are. And then sometimes I'll be like, well, I'll get this, oh, this depth of this card that is, you know, huge, this esoteric sort of deep <laughs> meanings. And I'll be like, this person needs this. That's what they need. Because you, and that's something to, you know, as you're an individual teacher or an individual reader, but you're also, as you go through, there are your individual clients need something different. 
no one client is going to need the exact same reading or even the same deck. I don't know if you, I, I play around with my Oracle decks like that. I intuitively just go, you need this. And, you know, I might not have used that deck for six months, but it's that feeling of, you know, doing the dance between intuition and the, the blueprint of what the meanings are can really help you when you are in those spots of just trusting yourself. That's true. Uh, there are some readers who will actually bring about 10, 12 decks and they'll say, pick one you want me to oh. read. I've never done oh. that. I'm, I'm like, oh, no. interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I should try one day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be interesting to let them just pick one. Um, yeah. One I thing about like your table system. setup. Um, oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, if it's certain festivals or craft fairs, you can be kind of straightforward with your table. I have a tablecloth. I put a banner that says yes. Scarlet Mystic tarot readings, you know, certified through the International Institute for Complementary Therapists. You know, I have that on. Um, if I go to more what they call wispy woo shows, more witchy, occultish type Occult, shows, yeah. I put a black tablecloth. I have two mm. sets of fairy lights. I put it either end of the table and I have a soft rose drape to go over it. I have an hourglass. I have I have it more wispy looking because I like for some that. Reason, so, sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, for some reason people are drawn to certain things at certain shows, and some people want that wild look. Yeah, they're attracted to the. So yeah. that's a good tip when you, whenever you know, like whatever you're doing, just make sure you're adapting to that. So maybe don't show up to a craft fair with all the full pentacle and the full right. <laughs> the full full <laughs> stuff just go in there gently maybe <laughs> maybe a couple of pretty crystals <laughs> yes yeah, very very gentle and light rather than the full-on you know the stuff that might intimidate your audience i've got any other questions here oh me i uh, me, I have a hard time with the narrative. I see it in my head and it's hard to put into words. Um, look, Mia, please don't worry. This it, it does take time and practice. And I often talk about um, in my Build Your Spiritual Healing Business on a Budget course on Udemy, I talk about how it. I did over 50 readings before I felt confident enough to charge because it took me that long to feel like I was actually fluent, I guess, if you're fluent in tarot. Um, so, you know, don't worry. That that does take time. And as, as Scarlett said, you build your own narrative. Like you start to get in the flow. But one big tip I will give you that has absolutely saved me besides practice lots and study lots um, is be really consistent with your psychic protection beforehand, before doing a reading. Like there's something about offering the ritual to the universe of just taking that time of being able to go within, light a candle, do some deep breathing, call in your guides, you know, like taking that time for me is the massive difference and that's one of the reasons I don't do random free readings and people often like people that don't know me will be like and they meet me at a party and they ask what I do and they go oh can you read me now and I'm like no <laughs> because I need to go away and do a whole lot of this stuff because that's when I'm at my best and I don't know if you find that for you Scarlett um but it, it's better to just have some rituals and I was going to actually segue into that as well I'll ask you two questions there what rituals do you do when you have these, I get asked this all the time, when you have, you know, 10 readings in a row, how do you take the time to do a ritual, like any kind of psychic protection? I'm going to answer this honestly, and this is going to sound very weird. And I would probably tell people go, <laughs> I tell people go your way rather than my way. I don't do anything, but I'm going to ah. tell you, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. I immerse myself so much in mysticism ah, that I think, on that. I, I, I don't know how to say this. I, I just, I'm constantly either taking a course on something spiritual or occult, or I'm reading monographs in mysticism and mysticism, mystic practices. And I think I have a natural protection around me. Um, I when that. I remember, I try to, to do that, to do a little quick, you know, okay, please, you know, bless these readings, please help everyone get what they need, something very quick. Um, what's interesting about the readings and the, the, I can go to a show and I can be on just like everybody's hitting. And then you'll have somewhere like, they're like, 
I'm not really getting anything out of this. Oh. You'll find that increasing a lot of times. The more you do this, the more you get in your groove, um, yeah. that you'll start having more hits. But I always end the reading with, do you have any questions about the cards? Can I answer anything for you? And they'll tell you right then and there, like, I got something out of this card. I got something out of this card. Uh, these didn't make much sense, but, you know, maybe it will later. Um, have you got, I know you mentioned before, um, oh, thank you, Mia. Mia's just saying thank you. What kind of psychic protection, D Diane says. So for me, um, I do have a whole course on this, by the way, called How to Be Psychic, where I, I go into psychic protection on deep levels. But even if you, especially when you're doing it in a quick situation like that, I would do something at the beginning of the, the day if you know you're not going to have much time in between. Like when I worked in the shop, I just didn't have enough time to often do that. So do a big one. So I go in, it takes me about 20 minutes and I will light a candle, I will put incense and I will clear my cards, I will knock on them, I will light, um, I will, sorry, I will, if I've got a sound bowl, I can use that um, and I will just basically do a prayer and I will tune in a bit to my energy, I'll make sure I'm grounded and then I'll make sure that I'm connecting up there before I go into it. If you want more, Diane, on how to do this, as I said, I do have a whole course on this. I also have a uh, free video on YouTube, which is called Bless, you know, is it Bless Your, yeah, Bless Your Tarot Cards. If you, if you go into my YouTube channel to the How to Read Tarot section, you'll see it in there about how to bless your cards and you'll see how I do my rituals then as well. So just different guides I call in and how I sort of do the whole thing. So that's another way you can do it if you want to, if you're not really ready to enroll in a big course right now, that could help as well. So I hope that's helped. Um, but I'm interested, you are the second um, very talented psychic that I have met who says they don't do protection, that they do enough of their own vibration work they feel like they don't need to. So I love that. Again, this is what I love about what we do is that everyone has different things. Please don't make yourself feel inadequate or you're doing it wrong because you see someone doing something and think, oh, well, Sal said I have to do this or this person on YouTube says I have to do that. It's like you will find what you need to do. Trust yourself. Like start with mentors and and you know courses and start learning but then you'll branch off on your own and you will surprise yourself you know you really will um so i was going to say before we go have you got any things any just tips i know you've shared a lot but anything that you feel like to make sure you definitely avoid when you're doing lots of readings in a row like that especially like in, in those kind of situations um some things to avoid is you will find you will have some customers sometimes that can be a little pushy, uh, you know, uh, they want to be talky talky and you've got people waiting. Uh, avoid trying to get too caught in. Just, you know, find a, way, a nice way to end it and say, if you need me again, here's my information. Um, avoid letting your voice go because I mine can get kind of weak. So keep water keep hydrated so um and if you i was going to say sorry i was going to add one quick addition sorry to interrupt you i don't i had it here and i must have dropped it but kyanite kyanite for me the crystal kyanite that is um that was my lifesaver because it is a really great lapis as well if you can wear lapis oh, okay. or lapis well, and kyanite are great those. for the throat they're um those of you who love crystals they're good for yes. water <laughs> don't just yeah, take the crystals water. and forget the water <laughs> Exactly. Um, Sorry, yeah. continue. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. You know, if you need to take a break, you know, uh, don't avoid taking a break. You know, sometimes there's a lull. Get up and move a, a little bit. Take yes. a break. Uh, carry your phone with you. Have your spouse or your partner text you if somebody comes to the table so you can yeah. head right back. Um, just don't so avoid. Another you know, market stall person or someone that you can say, yes. can you let me know? Yeah. Yeah, you can buddy up that way. Uh, everybody's willing to help. Uh, get plenty of rest the night before. Um, try to take care of yourself. Avoid letting yourself go physically. Take care of your health yes, um, so true. that your energy is strong and you're present so that you're not, you know, not to fall over. Um, you know, so those are just... I went and saw this tarot reader at this craft fair and she fell off her chair. Yeah, <laughs> really, she <laughs> turned out of it. <laughs> She was so, exhausted, but she she had her water there, though. She had her water there. And I do put stones on the table. I have a quartz sphere, and I have um, some of cinnabar 
in a resin sphere for oh, transformation, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like yeah. an alchemical thing, uh, and a big amethyst point. So, you know, you want to just, you know, things like that. That's the big thing. Keep plenty of cash on you because I had one instance where a lady was insisting on paying $100, uh, but the reading was only 30. Luckily, my spouse said we do have enough to make change. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's that's a good tip. So lots of good tips there, making sure you've got water, making sure you've got cash. Um, I will add a couple of those amazing tips that um, those of you who are like, I'm, I'm still a bit nervous. What if I don't make enough money? What if I don't, you know, XXX? X, X, X. I'll say this. I have done some of these festivals. I remember doing a women's festival years ago that was a total bomb. Like the, the organisers had not advertised it. Um, a whole lot of the uh, stall holders ended up suing people like it was a, an absolute bomb and but I, and I did a few readings but it didn't really you know wasn't what I was hoping for um, but they, they went very well but what came out of it was I met some amazing people and one of the women I met there I'm still good friends with today 15 years later um, you know that this is in 2009 I did this and we're still friends and you know, like you, you never know. And she's recommended lots and lots of people to me over the years for readings. Um, and I didn't even do a reading with her. She actually came and I was full and busy and she wanted to know about the woman sitting next to me who I had seen read. I said, yeah, she's great. Go with her. And then we just became good friends and, you know, still good friends. And so don't underestimate the value of getting yourself out there and meeting people. I know, we, you know, obviously money and running a business is, is a priority. But I feel like there's also a lot of other incredible experiences that you can have when you are physically out there in the world doing readings like this. I don't know if you agree with me. Like there's there's connections you can make. There's um, And there's something for me about your confidence level that goes up when you do those kind of things because you do often tend to, you know, you, you're in a way performing live, I guess, even if it's only one person. But there's yes. for me a certain feeling that feels really good about doing that. Um before I forget, sorry, I haven't, I was meant to ask you this. I'm glad I'm remembering. Um, I know you and I talked a while ago. I think you asked me these questions about um, doing events and parties. So talk yes. to me about, talk to, if, you, if you could talk about that too, that'd be great. Because I know there's people here that often ask in my um, tarot, in my uh, tarot card success course, the Facebook group that's connected with that, Tarot Mastery, people often ask that question. They want to know, mm -hmm. hey, you know, like, tell me about events and parties and what are the do's that's and don'ts. Important. So yeah i'm going to be honest with you if you could get events and parties and corporate work you could make more money oh, yes, because i mean you're making if weddings are good because you can make 600 bucks for four or five hours <laughs> imagine five getting hours. a reading at a wedding <laughs> yeah you sure can um corporate work, it's a very target rich environment isn't there <laughs> lots of people getting sentimental about getting married and wanting to know they want a tarot reader to... yeah i had a couple of those you can make some money and if you can get that regularly you can i could make my salary now here's the downside every year is different this year i'm not getting the leads like i did last year uh, i okay. can't do day work so a lot of times a corporate event that's taking a, a conference is taking place in the day i can't do it so yeah. it's it's kind of you know hit and run but the bash and gig salad um are places you can sign up i know for the u.s i don't know oh, about thank you. can countries. you say that again sorry uh, the bash gig salad g-i-g -G, uh, s-a-l-a-d and salad. then the bash t-h-e b-a-s-h like okay, so bash. the bash and git salad is that git gig like salad calling someone a silly git is that like, yeah like a gig like, like i'm doing a gig yeah oh yeah. gig gig a gig. Yes. gig gig salad and, and my, the bash. my hair is yeah. not great and the bash mm -hmm. okay cool that's thank you that's two great tips so that's how you can find out about events uh including right. corporate events exactly and let me just share one real quick tip before you yeah. leave make sure you look at your contract and your calendar to make sure you know exactly how long you're supposed to be there i had a a oh. real brush with a bride at a wedding where I was thinking I was leaving at nine. Well, she had bought to, me to stay at 10 and I kept insisting nine. And so the wedding planner comes to me and says, um, she's really upset about this. You know, she said she paid for what I said, you know what, let me just go check. I had it in my head that yeah. I had it in my head. She was right. Oh, so I apologize. Double check. 
I double check. Don't think you have it in your head. I don't care how good you think you are with your memory. You go yeah. look at that contract. Anyway, I smoothed it over, stayed my time, um, talked to the bride afterward. I said, I really apologize for the misunderstanding. She said not to worry. She said, thank you for coming. But you, you know, you always wonder, you know, did that put a damper on things? I don't know. I tend to make more of things. Don't ever yeah. be that sure. I was going to say, with events, um, so you can find out about corporates and weddings and those kind of things there. And you just apply to you supply for them, or do they send out applications? They will they see your profile. You'll go on there. You'll set up a profile. Get a picture of yourself. Do a description of what you offer. You know, uh, make it sound appealing. You can add videos if you want to of yourself or whatever. And they will search you out, and uh, wow. they will send you a lead. And so they'll say, "Here's the event. Here's where it's at. Here's the date, the time." And you note if you can do it or not. And so if you apply, you say, "Yes, I can do this. Here's what I charge." Um, here's what I need. Uh, I would probably say, and I have, I've kind of changed up my responses. Don't put in your response, I need a quiet place to read because some of these events, <laughs> we're not quiet. They're not not wanted. Quiet because, don't even say that. Just say, I will need a I'll place to read. High maintenance <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't say that. So uh, a lot of times you want, and I'm not the best at this, but you want to make it sound very rah-rah and, oh, you know, hey, congratulations on your event. That sounds so exciting. I would oh, love right. to help you. You know, I've been doing this a long time. Your guests will love it. Um, here's what I charge. If you have any questions, let me know. I just need a table and two chairs to do the readings. Um, I'll need one break, five minutes to take a bathroom break. And that's it. Uh, I have been turned down and other people chosen for yeah, various and sundry reasons. You don't know why. I think a lot of times for me, it's I can't do daytime work. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. So you, it's obviously harder, but that's good to know. I mean, for those of you out there who maybe are currently holding down, um, you know, day jobs, that's actually good to know that you still can do night. There's, you know, there's still night events available and so being able to just go okay what can I do um that fits that fits within my schedule and that there's still that so that's great that thank you that's really beautiful I like I like the thing of uh, the tips you have given today have been amazing thank you so much um so for me it has been a long time since I've done an event like that so it's so nice to know that there's a whole lot of new resources available um that you can access. I will put all of these for you if you are watching this on YouTube. I'll put them all in the links down there. Um, before we go, I'd just love to um, thank you so much for your beautiful time. And if people would like to book a reading or know more about you, how can they do that? And what are your let people know what your socials are as well. I'd love people to know how they can connect with you on Instagram and TikTok and find out more. Oh, I'm always happy to help. Uh, readings or just other questions. My website is scarletdarkwood.com and it's one T. Um, yeah. If you go to Facebook, you can see my link tree. I have all my links there, but I'm on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Perfect. And that's and your handler names are just like Scarlet Darkwood? Scarlet Darkwood, yes. Perfect. Uh, okay. My YouTube is Scarlet that. Darkwood author, but just Scarlet Darkwood, yeah. it's going to come up. It'll come up. Oh, wonderful. Because I'm sure so many people got so much value out of this and they will hopefully be in contact with you and start following you on socials and learning more about you. And if you want a fabulous reading, I have seen this wonderful woman read and she is amazing. So please do... If you're thinking about getting a reading, I can highly recommend her as well. Thank you so much for your time today. And I hope there's been lots and lots of questions that are generated when I pop this on YouTube. If anyone else is here live, pop a question. Um, I hope you've gotten a lot of value out of it. Um, and as always, if you want to get more of these offerings on YouTube, please do hit subscribe so that you always get my latest masterclasses. And I think that is everything. I think we've covered everything. I'll probably get off and go, oh, I forgot that. But <laughs> I can pop it in a little thing. Um, but yes, thank you again, my love. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's been amazing to talk to you and thanks for everyone for taking the time today.